guys very good evening to all of you uh, welcome to the video number 340 my name is Ajay and uh, I'm going to actually today talk about how to modify or change the text file content using the Excel VBA so we are going to make the automation and this is going to be a fantastic video because uh, so far I really haven't talked about uh, how to modify the text files so this is my uh, you know the first video in which I'm going to teach you how to basically edit the text file data using the Excel VBA programming right so if you're watching the channel for the first time I very warmly welcome all of you to the channel and you can enjoy all these 340 videos as you can see here and they are the videos on Excel Excel VBA access and access VBA you just need to click on the playlist and you will find here 42 different playlists and you can see here have the different different playlists created right so on every subject we have the videos for you and if you if you're a beginner this is a fantastic the platform to start with this and if you're already a developer level grammar then I can bet if you go to the channel you will find a tons of you know extremely advanced level thing so everything is on you know available on this channel we have the basic videos we have the intermediate level videos and we have the uh, you know extremely advanced level videos as well the video which I'm talking about is this is going to be uploaded on the Excel VP file handling when you click on that, you will get to see a lot of videos over here, um, seven videos actually, and they are all, you know, on the file handling part. This text file actually also comes under the file handling part, right? So if you, if you don't have any idea about how to deal with the text files, then I would request you to please go ahead and watch video number 324 and 325, where I talk about how to you know work with the text files and how to actually use the couple of the loops in the text file they are extremely very beneficial and also mandated for you before you actually watch this video right so in this video i'm going to take up the question from one of my subscribers shruti and uh, uh, she has sent out email to me and i'm really really very happy extremely happy to share her email because this is fantastic i mean she has appreciated about the channel a lot you know read out email uh, so this is what actually she has written hi ajay let me first congrats you for having such an awesome channel it was my good day that while surfing for the powerpoint videos I luckily stopped by your channel and could not stop watching many videos back to back i'm following your videos and watching every day and learning so much out of it thank you so much that's really you know awesome if if, if you're learning the excel or excel vba access access vba whatever i mean you're trying to learn I'm very happy, extremely happy that you are actually getting the benefit, you know, out of the videos which I record because that is what I want to, you know, actually do. That is with this aim, actually, I have started the channel, Shruti, uh, that I simply want to make everybody awesome in the automation part, right? It seems like I will have to take off from work and sit in that day and watch your all videos. That's really crazy. Uh, but I believe you're moved you're more faster than me uh, because I see almost every day you have new video uploaded on your channel well yes because I have a lot of work back to back and a lot of guys you know a uh, uh, lot of my subscribers they keep on writing me so I really can't actually take a rest so I am in the queue and I'm trying to you know upload the videos every day so that you actually at the earliest you know I can provide the resolution and at the same time I can share it with the entire world right but this is good for me because this is giving me a limitless learning and so much stuff to watch absolutely i fully agree with that and that's what i'm actually challenging you on that i'm challenging everybody in fact you know and the challenge is you just start watching the videos and i can bet on that you will never be able to you know reach the last video because i'm gonna upload so many videos every day every hour you know the day will come when i'm gonna upload even four videos five videos very soon you know because the thing is that as the channel grows and as you know i keep on getting the emails and the comments on the youtube channel the questions on the youtube channel i think my job my responsibility uh you know it, it is going to increase and i really definitely want to you know turn uh, turn up as a good guy you know and i really want to be on your expectations right so that's what actually uh, my aim that's why i started this channel two years back and it's growing and i can see that the results day by day you guys are all appreciating you are writing me emails fantastic messaging me calling me and giving me the comments on the youtube channel so it's fantastic guys trust me i mean you know if you don't give me the feedbacks then i think uh, it's like you know one man army and i simply will hate it because then it's not going to push me to work you know uh, harder with every video i try to make it uh, awesome i ev with every video i like you know having a competition with my previous video so that's what actually i try to do that's it 
right? So thank you so much, Shruti. It's really indeed, I mean, I've, after a long time, I have seen such a long email and really, uh, you know, such a wonderful comment. I cannot express you how, how much happy and, you know, how much actually overjoyed I'm feeling right now after reading this email. Thank you so much. And so this is what uh, how she uh, she has written. This is a this is good for me because this is giving me limit, this is giving me limitless learning and so much stuff to watch. My genuine thanks to you and your incredible work so much. I'm writing this email with one concern, which is bothering me from last one month. I'm a business analyst and I deal with a lot of refining of data. My problem is around the text file in which I get millions of data and there are so many columns inside it. I want to target one column which has a transaction ID. Of so many IDs, there is a, there is a, an ID which is triple five six four, which we want to change. We want to fix it with INC. Doing in a text file means it is going to be a daily task. Absolutely, I agree. And I cannot find worth expo exporting it in Excel. This data is huge. Anyway, automate this. No, you wanna give me the solution, but it's just that I can't wait. Please see if you can. Upload a video and explain eagerly waiting for your next video, Shruti. All right, so thank you so much. First of all, Shruti, this, this is actually seeing me a very wonderful question. Now, I'm actually without wasting the time, I'm really gonna, uh, you know, my all the viewers, my lovely people out there, what we actually we are going to do, guys. We have this test file I have created it, and you can see here there are the two columns. Now, it can have 15 columns, 20 columns, doesn't really matter. You see, all the columns are separated by space. In your case, it might be comma. It, Maybe hash, maybe dollar sign, or maybe tab key, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter, right? What actually we are going to do is, uh, I'm first of all going to this test dot txt file, okay, the VBA code, right? Then we are going to read these lines one by one, okay? And we are then once once we are going to read the lines one by one. So suppose when you're going to read this line, which is the line number two actually, or one, you can say if I exclude the headers. And what I want to do is I want to split this data. So A and 55, which are separated by the space, they're going to split by the space. Okay. And we have a split function, which we are going to use in this. And we're going to actually use the arrays also. So what will happen, this A55, uh, if I just open the Excel, what will happen, this is going to be created here and 55 is going to be created here. And we know that we are going to target on the first column. So I'm simply going to use the if condition. I'm going to compare this with if condition that this is equals to a i would like to change it to inca so this has to be changed to inca and this is the task just in case if that is not the a then simply just you know put the else part and do not change anything right at the same time changes which are going to make or just in case if the change is not going to happen because there would be some lines like a50 uh, ab44 and bg66 and jg77 you do not require any change because there is no actually word a basically we are trying to fix uh, wherever we have a we are going to fix it with the inc that is the actually motive of this video that is what actually we are going to quit right so what are we going to do we're going to copy every line with the new change or even if there is no change and we're going to paste it in the new file which we're going to create so first of all you have a test file which is already existing test.txt and then there is going to be another file which we are going to create which is one dot txt and every time the data when we're going to read it the test dot txt file we're going to paste it in the test one file then what will happen at the end of the day we will do when the data is going to be copied from the test to the test one we're going to read this test file and we are going to rename this test one as test that's it guys this is what we actually we want to do now let us go to the developer CAD, uh, developer code and let, let me hit on the visual basic and let me go and insert the module now the first thing which you need to do is you need to use the library the library you need to use the scripting library right so you need to use the scripting runtime library just press m and see that where you have the microsoft scripting runtime so here i'm going to um, see that they are all alph alphabetically sorted out so m n o p q r s so somewhere here i should see that yeah microsoft scripting runtime error uh, scripting runtime library this is what you need to on just make sure before you write the code come back to the tool reference and see that if it is activated or not well i can see it on so that perfect that is perfectly fine i'm i'm ready to go the first thing which i want to do is as i was telling you that we will have to create a file so first of all we'll just write uh, uh, macro name so i'm going to write file edit let's say now what is the first thing i want to do guys 
first thing which I want to do is I want to use the file scripting library so I'm going to declare uh, an object variable which is FSO and we're going to write it as scripting dot file system object right now then you have to define it which is going to be equals to a system object now for those who are not following this channel and maybe they are you know, here for the first time then I want to tell basically scripting dot file system object is a library which you use for the folders or for the files so whenever you want to get into some folder and you want to pick up some file from there and you want to compile the data then you know whatever the files you have text files csv files excel files you got to use this scripting dot file system object and if you want to watch more examples on that i already said that you got to click on this excel vb file handling playlist out of all these 42 playlists and you can see all these videos one by one they are seven videos and you will have a very good understanding on that and if you specifically work getting on the text file then please go ahead and watch three to four and then three to five so this video this is uh, something i'm not really going to talk about uh, i mean from the basic perspective as yes, we have already videos on the basic level you just go and watch and enjoy those videos so in this now we're going to declare this fso now what is the next step now the next step is that file which you have on your desktop which is test.txt you got to define it so you're going to write here uh, let's say right here original file original file as scripting this is how you want to write scripting and then you want got to use the file text actually uh file actually stream text stream is the class you're going to use it and then you will define your original file guys so what is your original file how you define it using the fso that is why we declared it fso as scripting dot file system object so that we can use this scripting library and the class called file system object because in the file system object you have this method which can take you to the you know that file so i'm going to open the file which is open file then you have to write here a complete path of that you know, text file so i just to the right click and i'm going to uh, hit on the right click and the properties and i'm going to actually do the security and i'm going to paste the code from here so i just copy this just copy this and then i come back to the code and i'm going to actually paste it within the quotes right so now what happens is additional underscore file or ig underscore file is always going to be considered as dot txt you have to remember this okay the next thing i want to do the next thing is that i want to create a new file which is i'm going to name it as new underscore file as scripting again the same stuff and it has to be again the text stream we have to use this text stream class now guys there's a difference in the new file which is that it is not existing we have to create it so again using the fso library would would actually go ahead and create the text file right so this is how you create the text file again i'm going to use the same path because i want to create it in my desktop you can change the path in just in case if you're looking for a different path now this time i'm going to name it as test one for example so when i run this line test one will be created right now what we need to do now the next thing which we actually want to do is we want to read the file one by one so this is the loop we're going to run and i'm going to say here do while not you write your file name and you got to write at end of stream which is the property of this you know when you, when you work with the text file this is how you use it this means that you got to use this uh you know until unless reach on the last line at the end of the stream so what will happen if i just write here message box and i just show you how it is going to come so i'm going to write here additional file please read the line read line right and i'm going to run this see what will happen of all if you see that this is going to create the test one if you see that the test one is created here wow it perfect what we're gonna have we're gonna read this original file uh you know till the time we do we are not on the last line so what is the first line you know that it is the header right and i'm going to run it again we have that second then the another line which is a b 44 and then the another line which is a 43 433 and then another line which is a 33 and then it's another line which is 66 and i believe this is the last one gh77 and the loop finishes right when you're going to capture these lines what you need to do obviously uh, i don't need this line message box you know so what i will do is i, I will simply convert it into a variable called i'm going to declare one variable as well and i'm going to define it as string okay this variable is going to hold this entire syntax first line of a text file and then so on second line line so what we need to do is now i'm also going to tell you about how to call the function many of you have asked me in the past also that uh you know 
there, there are a lot of articles on, on the Google as well that you know where you see that people actually generally call the functions from the macro so this is the perfect example this is the perfect video where you can see how beautifully we can make the things and how beautifully we can call the functions well if you don't have any idea about it maybe I would suggest you to go ahead and watch the video how to call the functions from a macro or so recently I have actually uploaded that video and if I'm correct then I think guys it's going to be under the playlist Excel uh, VB introduction series just go ahead and watch that well anyways uh, this is how we're gonna write so first of all you declare the function name so I'm gonna declare my function name as Ajay I'm going to declare here as I as in, you know the string so it is going to be a string I don't know what the function is going to return me so I just declared it, declared it as a variant right so this is how I to write the, my function what we need to do is this i is going to be directly connected with this var so to call the function you write the call word i hope you know that and then you write the function name and then in the function what exactly you want to pass on so i'm going to pass on this variable which is var so what will happen when this code will run your var is going to pass on the value to the i and from there it is going to be taken up for example let me show you first of all why don't we just create a watch on this so i just go ahead and, and maybe i can create the watch on this I'll create the watch i'm going to run this code and you see that at the watch window it says name and marks the moment this line runs j is a function which is created in this module so automatically you know your cursor will this yellow actually arrow will go to the function and then what happened this i is going to you know pick up the var value so if i just put the watch code you know, on this i you see that what exactly you will see see the same value guys this means that in the i also you have the same value in the i if you have the same value now we need to actually do one thing we need to split this line into two columns as i was talking about name should be separated and mark should be separated and then we're going to target on the name we're going to do the if condition that if name equals to a then please change it to you know i in c a otherwise to the next line that's it this is what we you know actually need to do okay so how are we going to do that? I'm going to create the array. So I'm going to write here in my array as variant. See, and then my array is going to be equal to. So there is a split function which you can use in the arrays. Split is what? Split is more of a like text to column. You know, in Excel, when you do the uh, text to column, let me show you. I just go to the book one and I just maybe say I write here A and space B. If I want to separate this, what you do? You select the entire column, you go to the data, and then you click on the text to column. You click on the text to column, you this is the delimited, right? So this is the delimiter. I use this next, and then instead of the tab, I use the space. You see that this A and B are going to be separated. And what will happen if I click on the finish, A and B are going to be separated. So in the same way, in the VBA, you have a function, and the function actually is called the split. So what do you want to split? I want to split the I with the delimiter what? I have a space here in case in your case if it is a hash or maybe hyphen or you know whatever it is you just need to use that delimiter means from you know uh, with uh, the delimiter actually is signifies your it, it actually uh, it is a point of uh, separating the data right it, it is it is something which separates your data now it can be anything that depends but generally in the text files either it is going to be a space or comma right so I'm just going to write this what will happen when you run this your my array will have the two positions this my array zero is going to be equal to the header part the first header part and then my array one which is the index the second index you know it's going to be the second header part so i can show you this uh, let me just put the watch code on this let me just right click and i'm gonna click on the watch code. now we're gonna run this so if i run this line see what will happen you know that in the wire I actually have value which is called name and marks so the moment you want to run this i is going to have this name and marks so now your array is going to split and you see that the my array doesn't show any sign it is simply it's written there there's nothing uh, unusual about it you know it looks very normal but the moment you run this see what will happen basically this i which is actually being a value of your this name and marks this is gonna you know split the data and if i run this you see that the plus sign comes and the moment you know you click on the my array is what you will see so now your array actually is going to you know hold the zero index as name and one in the one index it's going to hold the marks if you're wondering why what is the zero and one please go ahead and watch excel vb arrays a playlist and there 
it's a video which is um, on the arrays the basic introduction to the arrays you can watch that basically when you run the arrays uh, by default the index starts with the zero so my target is only on the zero because zero is the one where i have the names i don't want to touch the marks so here i will write simply a if condition i'm going to write here if my array has a zero index if it is equals to a remember a is a case sensitive right if it's a case sensitive so in vba specifically i'm talking about the vba vba if it's a case sensitive so please ensure that you should have a correct case so this is what i'm going to write you are a then what i want to do is i want to simply change you so i want to change your index zero equals to what i'm going to prefix actually inc with you okay and the next thing which i want to do is i want to fix it with the which value obviously with that zero index and at the same time you will have to use the space and you have to use the my array one as well so that the complete line would be generated because in the my array one second column will be there and you don't want to actually miss out that right once you have that value so basically if a would come then you would have it there inc a space and then let's say marks would be 50 so that line will come there what you need to do is that line has to be printed line we need to print it actually where we need to print that line in the new file text file so what you will write here you will write new file and then dot dot uh, so i don't see any property or method here using the dot operator but at the same time i want to show you this look at this guys if i write here new underscore file and dot where the line comes why it is not coming in my you know function it's a reason the reason is very simple this new file actually is a variable which is a local variable local variables means that the moment the macro finishes or the moment the macro jumps to the another macro lose their identity it cannot be forwarded but in this case we actually want to carry forward it we want to use the new file here what you need to do is you need to change the scope of this variable so you need to change the local variable scope to the public so what you will do you you will simply cut this line where you have defined this you're gonna make it on the top after the option explicit and this is how it is going to be declared. this means that this is a public variable and within this particular module it can be used you know from any function it can be used in any subroutine as well it's all you know matter of actually you know, basically uh, uh requirement you know so it is in this case we required it in the function so we can use it what I'm going to do is look at this. I'm again now going to use the same line new and then file and dot. look at this. This is so powerful, guys. I just love this VB programming. You know, the moment you have just declared it on the top, you know, how these Microsoft guys have developed this programming really, you know, sometimes makes me crazy, guys. You know, normally you press the dot operator, you get to see the properties and the methods, right? When you have declared it on the, uh, within the sub, it was not showing up. This is really really phenomenal i mean really i mean you know i appreciate them these, these people uh, they every one or two years of a gap they come up with the new excel versions and this is fantastic what they are doing right so now this is what you actually going to do you're going to use the method right line so in the new file what you want to write is firstly you know that i want to write here my array zero index which will have all the values so this is what we're going to write here okay what if the array is not going to be equal to a then what you will write then in that case again you will write here because if let's say you don't have a, a first column doesn't mean that you want to skip that line you will simply need to write that line but then in that case what you will do uh, you will simply use the you know my array which is going to be equals to exactly the same which you have in the previous position so you're gonna concatenate it with the space and then you're gonna write here my array and the index one which would be marks that's it and you don't have to basically use this line this line inc is only for the purpose when you actually find in the first column value a okay. so i think this is done and then we'll write end if okay fine now let us go ahead and let us actually check if we are on this or not so i'm going to run this there we go start the code and so what is the first value in the var the var actually holds name and marks the so subword function not defined which function we haven't defined well i think there's a spelling mistake here it has to be my array so let me just correct the spelling all right there we go guys all right there's one more error, error. All right so i think i did a typo mistake and uh oh god i never appeared for any writing otherwise i would have scored definitely zero right 
to know. Okay, I'm so sorry, guys. Hmm? That's very funny. It just, I don't know, it happened. Okay, so this is done, and let me check everything. Right, all right, I think everything looks good. And run this. Oh, yeah. All right, so with the face of the god, finally we are running this. All right, be happy with that. I'm gonna run this split. So the moment it splits, you see that the plus sign comes. What is the first index of the array? It's name, right? Here we actually have are going to check you are equals to a. Obviously, a is not equals to name. Even you know, a student who is a style kg student, first standard student, you know, even he can say that this is not equals to so it's very simple. It goes in the else mode. In the else mode, what you need to do, very important. In the else mode, what you need to do, because your array is already split has been split in and marks so you got to combine them again so this zero is going to be concatenated with space and then this is going to be you know concatenated further with the my array one which is marks so ultimately you will have again the same position which is in space and marks same line actually so this is going to print now in the new file which obviously cannot see right now is it is is open but not be able to see it is open in the memory and VB will work on that so this line is gonna run and I'm sure it right now you know uh, definitely uh, you know, uh, had printed this line which is name and the space marks let's go to the end if now what is the thing the loop it comes back to the original subroutine and it goes to the next line what is the next line in the next line you have a and 55 do that right so this a and 55 is going to be used in this i so when i'm going to use this i will happen this is going to be split so the moment i here you see that your array is changed so now you have the zero index a and in the one index you have 55 we have split them so now my comparison is going to happen with the a and you can see here I've got here my array as a which is equals to a obviously keep uh, taking care of the case sensitive part as well so this will should go in this and mode so the moment it goes in this you know, mode this actually is going to be prefixed with i and c so finally what you have here i just hover my mouse over here you see that it's i and c 55 and this is what exactly we are going to print in our new file which is test one right so what we have done 55 we haven't changed it this is you know here as it is as its original value we're just going to you know Fix this INC with the my array zero because my array zero is the basic the column number which you want to target and I'm just using the concatenation I'm just using the ampersand sign here and sign you know which is just to join it so we have new line which is going to be created this time and this is going to be in fact second line so must have created that line it must have created that line the new file which is obviously test to one dot sixty let's go to the next line now, we still have a couple of more lines so this will go in the another now this time what bar is going to hold it's gonna hold a b 44 right a b 44 obviously never actually going to fall in then criteria because you know it is not equals to a obviously so it will go in the else part because a b is not equals to a that doesn't mean you are going to skip that line obviously we need to copy that line as well you know in the test one file that is what we are doing here we are actually saying that now find this AB with the space and then with this 44. So ultimately you will have the same line AB44 and that is going to be printed. So in this way you keep on running this and this is what we're gonna have. So let's see which line it is going to action. So there we go. And still we have more scope. So now we're going to uh, work with the BG space 66. And uh, the moment it splits, you can see here I have BG66 and I think this is the last line so the moment i run this this should be printed that's it now the loop is finished i i hope so uh no it is not still we have we have one more jj77 no problem this will also go in the else mode and finally it is going to print that same value the new text file and then end if the loop and there we go guys so the thing is finished when everything is finished let's go to the you know the code actually and let's have a look here so i'm just going to post this I'm going to just open the test one file. This is my test one file. This is my test one file. You can see here. So I'm going to open this and let's see. Okay, so we have got here INCA55, INCA433, INCA33, and well, the output is coming. But I have a problem here. Ideally, this should have been like this. 
you know, like this. What is the issue with this? The code worked. We have to see this. This is very interesting. Let me just have a look. Let me just don't save it. I'm going to delete this file right now. This one is deleted. Let's have a look in the test file. This one looks much better, right? Original file. So why we got that kind of a stuff? I'm still wondering. Uh, so when you're going to write the line, uh, I guess everything is fine. I'm, I'm really not sure. What I can do is I can put the message box here and let me just write here. Done. And we can run the code again. So let me hit here F5. Okay, let me see. It done. It is done. You can see the test file is created. Let me open the file. And it is still actually creating the problem, which is E marks. It is not actually going on the next line. Okay. So I got the point. I got the point. I got the error. Yes. That's a, that's a you know, wonderful error, guys. You know that I always say this. You, you, you learn so much from the errors. Now, it's a good thing that I'm recording this video and it happened. Now, what happened basically uh, when I saw that basically it's not creating the next line. So I immediately, you know, thought that there must be something wrong in my method. You know the method which i'm using and if you look at the file it actually says right so i think we use the right line method because you see when you press dot what happens have if, if you press the dot you press the you know just a second i just cut this line from here yeah so i'm going to write see that you have a right and you have a right back line and you have a right line so don't use the right method because that's not going to work it's not creating the next line so i'm going to use the right line as i used in this case right so now i just got the code same code so this time it should work so let's go ahead and close the file and now i'm going to actually delete this file it's one we press delete this says action cannot be completed because the file is open in microsoft excel read this line again guys action can't be completed because the file is open in a microsoft excel now, place the file open in the Microsoft Excel. In front of you, I have a screen and there is no text file open, I guess. Right? It, it is just that the test, test file is open. It has nothing to do with the test one. So what is the reason? For example, let me cancel it and let me just open it again. All right. So we got it, test one open. Now, this is perhaps the reason because, you know, you're actually running this code. What happened? You have declared this new file scripting text stream, you know, as a public variable. What happens? These public variables they don't lose their, you know, don't uh, destroyed when you run the macros. They don't get destroyed from the memory because of the public variable nature, right? And also for the fact because basically original file is linked with this new file, you know, so uh, might be that might be the reason. But I'm not sure about that. But one thing I can say that once you reset the code and then you open the file, that's definitely going to open. Like in this case, it is open, right? So Anyways, that's fine. Uh, I reset the code and when you reset the code, that simply means that your public variables are going to be destroyed from the memory. They're going to VBA is going to release their space so that it can reallocate the, you know, that space to some another variable. So that's why when you run the, you know, these macros, show that it should be a reset or maybe at the end of the you know, code also, you can destroy the files, which I'm going to tell you. Right now my job is to run this code so let's go ahead and run the code i have rectified this dot right line and we are just going to run it so let me click here there we go done now let's go ahead and open the file test one and there we go guys very simple i'm loving it thing is done you see that inc is perfect fixed with every a this is what actually was required so the code works now what is the next thing you want to do well the next thing you want to do is if i just open the file uh, Basically, you have to delete this file. Okay. For example, you delete this file. Then what you need to do, you just go and press F2 and rename the file. That's it. That's it. File is created. And if I'm going to open it, action can't be completed before, because the file is open in Microsoft Excel. So this is what I was talking about. You know, see that there's no test file actually here. I deleted that file, this file, but it is still, I'm trying to rename it. It is not working. I'm trying to rename it. It's not. If I just click outside, it says that it is already open in the Microsoft Excel. What does that mean? Now, if I go back to the macro and I just reset the code, okay, I clicked here on the reset. 
we come back here and now I'm gonna press F2 and I'm gonna change this one let's see if this time we can do that or not okay look at this guys I hope I have made my point right because when you run the code you have to close the files also because it, it can happen that when you when you run the code and the file is getting opened you know when you're actually reading the line one by one uh, if, if you're trying to edit the file it may not work because it's already opened and you cannot you know, change the name of the file you cannot edit the name of the file if it is already open so the moment i click on the reset what happens basically your files get you know uh, at least the files they get actually destroyed whatever the space they take in your vba memory right anyways that was the point but now i can automate this because this is also something which you will have to do daily i'm sure if you're doing it daily you will be you know, getting irritated with this so what we can do through the vba programming we can remove this file so i'm just changing this file back to test file you can see here so what you need to do is let me save the file first of all guys here in the message box when the loop is going to finish First of all, you need to ensure that your original file should close. So this is how you can write close. This is going to close the file. Once the client, you know, the file is closed, you simply need to use the kill method. Kill means that completely wipe it off, you know, from the desktop, completely destroy the file, remove the file, delete the file. So here you will actually have to use the path. And this is what I'm going to do. Once the test file is going to be deleted, this is the next step for you next step is to rename the test one as test and that guys so to do that first of all you will have to close in that new file as well which is open in the vba right memory so i'm going to close the file and then because I cannot edit the name otherwise so the file is going to be closed and then we what we will do we'll simply use the fso and dot then move move file move file means you know and paste so we got to move the file which file well you will have to paste the path here and this again the destination uh, so let me first put the quotes here so what i want to do and uh, this is my test one the test one now should be renamed as so if you just write here comma the destination the destination is going to be the test file is this file put it within the quotes what i'm saying is that this replace the test one as test file and that's it guys this is what we actually really need in front of you i have a test file you can see here we have the data a a a and there are a couple of more data which we don't want to change pg gj the moment i'm going to run this code now before i run this i want to ensure that i shouldn't should not be having any test one file if i just press it e and i show you there's no test one file right right so let's go ahead and run the code so i'm going to run this code and see this what will happen everything is done guys right now you have the test file here no one can say that you ever created test one because you see that on my desktop if i press t it's going to take me to the team viewer and then maybe some my excel files but there's no test one right? because test one is now test and i can show you because if i open this file it should give me the result it should say that inc a you know you should see here inc getting used with the a word so there we go you see here perfect guys so this is how you can modify your test files test files i beg your pardon and this is the code basically you actually should know it right i'm going to create some space here let me just press backspace so that we can see the code the complete code and you can it. so this is how the code looks like this right so we, what we learned we learned how to open the files how to create the text files how to call the variables how to call the call the functions from the you know macros and what a nice way of using the arrays arrays are always my favorite topic they are so wonderful so dynamic right you can make it pretty simple using the arrays so guys that's it for now i hope you enjoyed this video and if there is anything you want to share with me please leave your comment on this you know below on this video and i will try to answer that plus if you if you have watched this channel for the first time i want you to go to the channel and surf all the videos check out the stuff and let me know if you have any concerns and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much and i will be back with some another exciting stuff very soon as always thank you so much for watching